Welcome to LG Ministry. I'm so thankful that you have joined me today to hear another lesson from God's Word. I always do my best to present the truth and I hope the lessons that I present to you will challenge you or it will cause you to be uplifted so that you might grow closer to God. So now let's get to our lesson. Whether we like it or not, there's a great day coming called the Judgment Day and it will come on a day when we're not expecting it. Let's look at a few verses that talk about this great day. Jude 1, verse 6, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he is reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Matthew 12, verse 36, But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. Matthew 10, verse 15, As surely I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Hebrews 9 verse 27, And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. From these few verses, there should be no doubt that there will be a judgment day. As Jude said, it is a great day. Not only is it a great day because it's the end of our time here on earth, but it will be a great day for all who have lived righteous lives according to God's word. As Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, verse number 7, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. However, it will not be a great day for everyone, because those like the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they'll be cast into outer darkness, where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So let's begin looking at some of the things that will happen on this great day. Jesus will return like a thief in the night on the day of judgment. Now look at some verses that prove this. Acts 1 verse number 9. Now when they had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. This is after Jesus had been raised from the dead and had been with his disciples. They were talking to Jesus one last time in person before he visibly went up into heaven. And they were watching him as he was ascending up into heaven. And then we find these, these angels. They start talking to them and they tell them, you know, hey, guys, this Jesus you've seen going up like that, well, guess what? He's going to come back in the same way. In other words, it's going to be a visible return that people can see. Hebrews 9, verse 28, So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. The word appear means to make himself seen. So he will not return quietly or in secret, as the rapture doctrine teaches. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. John 5 verse 28, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So let there be no mistake, no one living or dead will be able to miss the second coming of Christ. As we learn from these verses, there is an order to things. Those who have died in Christ will rise first. 
Then the living will meet the Lord in the air. However, we are not told specifically where the wicked fall into this order, but we do know that they will be raised and judged on that same day. Paul points out again how Jesus will come on that day like a thief in the night because no one will know when that day will happen, which proves that there are no signs one can look for to know that Jesus is about to return. Not even the angels or Jesus himself knows when that day would be, as Mark 13 verse 32 states, but of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. On this day, when Jesus comes back, there will be a great gathering that has never been seen before. As we have already seen, the righteous and unrighteous dead will be resurrected, which can also be seen in Acts 24, verse 15. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both the just and the unjust. At the resurrection, those who are dead will no longer have physical bodies because they will be given new bodies that will last forever, as can be seen in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 35. But someone will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as He pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory, so also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Those who are still alive when Jesus returns will be transformed in the twinkling of an eye, as can be seen in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Paul teaches that the righteous will be resurrected just as Christ was, and that our spiritual bodies will be like His. Philippians 3 verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven, for which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to His glorious body, according to the working by which He is able even to subdue all things to Himself. However, not even the Apostle John knew the details of what our new bodies would be like, as taught in 1 John 3 verse 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. When Jesus comes back, he will come with his angels. Matthew 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and will then recompense every man according to his deeds. Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. 2 Thessalonians 1, verse number 7. And to give you who are troubled rest with us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with His mighty angels. On that day, everyone who has ever existed will be gathered to stand before Jesus to be judged. 
And while we don't have all the details, we can see that the angels that Jesus brings with him will play their part in gathering the just from the unjust, which means that they're going to be separated out. We can see this in the following parable, which Jesus explains of the tares and wheat in Matthew 13, verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will gather out of His kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be welling and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Nobody, I mean absolutely nobody, can escape this great day because everyone will be judged. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Jesus is the greatest judge we could stand in front of because he knows what it means to be like us. He has walked a mile in our shoes and then some. And so, you know, we can never say that he doesn't understand. Hebrews 4 verse number 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was at all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And nothing can be hidden from God. I don't care if you can hide things from those that are around you, you cannot hide it from God. Hebrews 4 verse 13. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Matthew 12, verse 36. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. So you will not be able to get away with anything on that day. Revelation 20, verse number 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. This emphasizes that all who stand before Jesus that they are going to be judged by how they live their lives. It doesn't matter if you are the President of the United States or you're a very poor person. We will all be judged. Again, this is pointed out in Matthew 25, verse 32. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And He will set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on the left. As we read earlier, the books will be open and Jesus will judge us, Acts 17, verse 31, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. The standard that we will be judged by is the word of God, John 12, verse 48. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him, the word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. So this tells us there doesn't have to be any surprises on the day of judgment. If we study God's word, we can know exactly what we need to do to go to heaven. As Paul told Timothy, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, All scripture is given by inspiration to God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. As John said, 1 John 5, verse 13, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So the judgment day will be a great day for those who have prepared themselves by living a faithful life to God. One of the books that will be open at that time is the book of life. 
This is the book that you want your name in, as indicated by the following verses, Philippians 4, verse 3. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Revelation 3, verse 5, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. If your name is in the book of life, then you are part of the redeemed who will go to heaven. But those people whose names don't appear in that book and have been blotted out, they will suffer the torments of hell forever. But they will still bow down and worship Jesus on that day. But it will be too late for them because they had their whole life to get things right. But they chose not to. And so they decided to live for themselves. Revelation 20 verse number 15. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 13, verse number 8. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Philippians 2, verse number 9. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth to those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There would no longer be any atheists after that great day because all will know that Jesus is the King of His kingdom and that everything that the Bible said is true. On that day, we will be rejoicing and weeping because the fate of every person will be decided on that day. The righteous will hear things like this, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Matthew 25, verse 21. Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. However, the wicked and all those who did not love God or obey His will will hear things like this. Matthew 25, verse 41. Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, verse 26. You wicked and lazy servant, cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Even some of those who claim to follow God and His Word might say something like this in Matthew 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. However, this will be a great day for the righteous because they will get to go to heaven. As Jesus promised, John 14, verse number 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. We will finally get to see this wonderful place that has been prepared for us. And while John does his best to give us a glimpse of what heaven might look like in Revelation 21, it will be something that can only be fully appreciated once you experience it. We will be in the presence of God Almighty, and we will no longer experience pain, death, or tears as can be seen in Revelation 21, verse number 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Now I wish I could say something good about those who choose the wrong path, but I cannot, because these are the type of things that we read about hell. Mark 9, verse 42. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble... It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. 
Revelation 14, verse 9. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Revelation 20, verse number 10. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Matthew 8, verse 12. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now I want you to notice how Paul contrasts the difference between the righteous and the unrighteous in 2 Thessalonians 1, verse number 7. And to give you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Also Matthew says in Matthew 25 verse 46, And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Jesus is telling us plainly that there will be an eternal separation. There are no second chances once you die. Also, when Jesus returns, the earth and everything on it will be destroyed. 2 Peter 3 verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. After the judgment is completed, Jesus will hand the kingdom slash church over to the Father. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive, but each one in his order. Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. The question becomes, are you ready for that great day? Many times people are focused on living their lives and accomplishing great things in a worldly way. But they forget that they are supposed to live their lives for God and, and they forget that their life is but a vapor as it is here today and gone tomorrow. They forget that our short lives here are not even a drop in a bucket compared to eternity. And this is why we need to realize that our main goal in life should be to be prepared for heaven because everything on this earth, all its riches, everything is going to be burned up and you cannot take them with you. Since we know that the judgment day is a reality, I hope that every Christian will remember what our priorities are supposed to be so that we will be ready for the judgment day. Even if it happens right now, or if it happens tomorrow or a hundred years from now, we will be prepared. Don't allow this old world and its influence to distract you and to try to get you off the path. Instead, keep pressing on toward your goal of heaven. If you're not a Christian, please understand that it's not too late for you. As Peter said, 2 Peter 3, verse number 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God gave the people almost a hundred years to repent during Noah's time, but none of them did. I hope that you will not follow their example. We are truly blessed because 
God has already given us almost 2,000 years since He died on the cross for us to be able to have time to get it right. Just like in the time of Noah, when it is time, the judgment day will begin. And if you have put off becoming a Christian, you will spend eternity in hell. Hell is a real place, and God doesn't want you to go there, but it is your choice. I hope that you will make today the day of your salvation. God's plan of salvation is simple. Thanks to God and His wonderful grace, He's made it possible for heaven to be our home through His Son. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died for you so that you could have your sins forgiven, then why not be saved today? God's plan of salvation is as follows. You must believe, John 8, verse 24. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, for if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. You must repent, Luke 13, 3. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. This means you change your ways, your worldly ways, and you conform them to God's Word. You must also be willing to confess Jesus as your Lord, Romans 10, verse number 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We must never be ashamed of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you also must be baptized in water for the forgiveness of your sins, as so many did at the birth of the church. Acts 2.38, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the easy part of obeying God's plan of salvation. The challenging part is remaining committed to Him for the rest of your days. As Jesus said, Revelation 2 verse 10, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. If we can remain faithful, then the judgment day will be a great day of rejoicing, but if not, it will be the saddest and most miserable day that we will ever experience. So what will your choice be? I sure do appreciate you listening to my lesson today. I hope that you found it something that is biblical, something that was encouraging, or maybe again challenged you to change your life, or just maybe gave you something to think about. I think it's so important that we listen and that we study God's Word as much as we can. Now, one thing I want to be clear on is I want you to never take my word at just because I say it so. Now, I do my best to study God's Word, and I try to make sure that I'm always presenting the truth. But I am just a man. I can make mistakes. So compare what I say to God's Word. If you do that, you can't go wrong. And if you find that I'm teaching something that is incorrect, I mean, you can turn to Scripture and you can say, look what it says here please contact me and let me know because I'm very concerned. I want to make sure that I am proclaiming the truth. Another thing that you can do that will be helpful to you is you can go on YouTube. You can search out LG Ministry and you can look for my videos there as well. And you will find, uh, I don't know, it's over like, I think it's close to 500 videos now or more. But there will be many lessons that you can continue to watch and you continue to grow from. Please let people know about this so that other people can see the truth taught. Again, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope that you continue to run the race and to remain faithful to God until the day that you die.